In this part, I'd like to show you a transgingival implant placement with gain of attached gingiva. Let's start with the incision line. I start with a palatal crestal incision. We leave the papilla, we call it the papilla preservation cut. Then we cut around the mesial and distal tooth by leaving approximately 3 mm of keratinized mucosa. This flap is a little more sophisticated. Why? Because now we don't raise a mucoperiosteal flap, we start with a split thickness approach. I'd like to show you the incision line. This is the bone. This is the soft tissue. This is the muscle insertion of the mimic muscle. And we have, of course, a periosteum on the bone. We start paracrestally on the palatal side. Here we raise a mucoperiosteal part until here. And now we go into the soft tissue and we split and we stay strictly above the muscle. Once again, mucoperiosteal flap here. And from here we go into the soft tissue and with the split thickness approach strictly above the muscle. After raising the flap, it looks like this. The periosteum now is in the flap here. Let's have a look from the buccal side. In this area we have the mucogingival junction. So now the flap design comes from the palatal aspect. We keep the papilla we stay in the keratinized tissue. So we have minimum of 3 millimeters here and here. And we still also have keratinized tissue on the other side of the flap. The advantage of this technique is to gain keratinized tissue. After raising the split thickness flap, in the end it should look like this. This part from here to here is healing by granulation. Let's have a look how this surgery can be done at the pig jaw model. Here especially in this area I can show you the advantage of this surgery. In this area you have less keratinized mucosa because of this all is movable gingiva and movable mucosa. We want to increase during implant placement also the attached gingiva, which means we should move this part more to an apical position. We start with the crestal incision line down to the bone. Now we go ahead with a vertical releasing incision and we stay in the keratinized mucosa. The same we do on the other side. Now we start to split the flap by raising only a minor mucoperiosteal part here. And now we start by splitting. Splitting means we leave the periosteum and the muscle to the bone at the moment. Now you see this is the mimic muscle. And now we have a very tension-free, movable mucosal flap.
Now we place a holding suture. With the holding suture we can easily retract the mucosal flap. Here you see the reason for the movability of the mucosa, it is the mimic muscle. Now you see how I remove the mimic muscle. But we still leave the periosteum to the bone. Now the mimic muscle is separated from the periosteum. This is the mimic muscle. The next step is the local removal of periosteum. Now we are going to place the implant. We start with a bone marker. It is a round drill. Then the pilot drill. We can control the implant axis with a parallel pin. The next one is the 3.3 mm form drill. And the final 3.8 mm form drill. If the bone is very hard, you may use the dense bone drill. Now we place the implant. The implant is in place. Finally, we close the implant with a cover screw or better with a healing abutment. The 4.0 gingival height healing abutment is directly put in place. This allows an open implant healing. The next step is suturing. We remove the holding suture and now we place the flap in a more apical position. We stitch from the outside through the keratinized part of the flap and a little more apical than before, we go through the periosteum which still is on the bone on the buccal side. And by doing the knot, you will see that the flap is moving to a more apical position. Now you see the flap is more positioned in an apical position. The same we do left and right.
The same technique can also be used by uncovering an implant which was in a closed healing period. And now you see that on the buckle side, the whole flap is more in an apical position. This apical position leaves an uncovered periosteum which heals by secondary healing. And with this we increase the whole area with keratinized mucosa. After surgery, we allow a healing of about five to seven days and then we remove the stitches. I'd like to summarize. This surgical approach gives you the opportunity to first gain keratinized mucosa, to combine implant placement and uncovering procedure and finally you have an easy control of gaining height of attached gingiva around your implant. I wish you good success with your next surgery, the transperiosteal implant placement.